So my principal interest is understanding what goes on inside our heads. And I'm convinced that one of the defining features of human intelligence is that we can understand stories in a way that other primates can't. So we start with fairy tales and we end up with the cases of law school and business school and medical school. And all throughout our education, we're dealing with stories. So believing as I do that stories are extremely important, it's natural then to try to build systems that understand stories and that shed light on what the story understanding process is all about. So let me demonstrate this by showing you a little bit of the Genesis system at work. Uh, we'll start with just uh, how Genesis uh, understands ordinary English uh, by typing in some very simple sentences about things happening in the physical world. So we can say, for example, so there's a description of a trajectory and the Genesis system has a variety of experts that understand that sentence in terms of it being a trajectory that goes along a path and ends up in a particular place. We can add a little complexity by saying the bird flew to the top of a tree. Oh, because a cat appeared. So now we have a transition and a cause to complement the movement along a trajectory. And of course, we are not limited to things that happen in the physical world. We can move into an abstract world. That's movement just like a cat moving to the top of a tree, but this time it's in a political space, uh, moving toward an abstract destination rather than a physical one. But still we see the trajectory apparatus light up and now we've added the goal. I can modify that a little bit and say the president asked Iraq to move toward democracy. And this time we light up the persuasion box. And if I say forced instead, that lights up coercion. So now we're going to move on and have a look at uh, a very simply stated version of Shakespeare's play, Macbeth. So the system is uh, reading away and everything that you see inside of a white box is explicitly told in the story, but all the stuff in the gray boxes has been inferred by common sense rules. For example, there's one here that says that Macbeth murders Duncan, so Duncan naturally becomes dead. But that's not all that we can do. We can look for more extended patterns in this thing we call the elaboration graph. For example, we can look for the revenge pattern and we find it there. Macbeth harms Macduff. That means that Macbeth angers Macduff. That leads to Macduff killing Macbeth. So Macduff in the end harms Macbeth. So when you put all that together, it's a kind of revenge. Now we can zoom back out and see even a more complicated pattern there. There's the Pyrrhic victory. That's because Macbeth does something that initially leads to him being happier, he becomes king, but eventually that leads to Macbeth being very unhappy because he gets murdered.